Hey guys, so let's talk about green screens. We love them and we hate them. They're the best way to get someone into a scene without actually being there. But they can also drive you absolutely crazy, especially if the footage is, well, less than ideal. But today I got some juicy hacks that help you fix those nasty keys and save your sanity. All right, I'm starting with some bad green screen footage in my timeline, and I mean, bad. Not cinema level bad, but like this was shot in my living room bad. No worries, this is actually perfect to show you how these tricks work. So first tip, and this one's crucial, is to work in separate parts. Don't try to key the entire body in one go. Trust me, the hair needs one key, the body another, and the legs. So here's what I do. I duplicate the clip three times. One for the head and hair, one for the body, and one for the legs. Then I mask out each section on its own layer. So now I have three separate layers, each with their own mask. That gives me total control. Control. Next up is a little color grading trick that makes the keying process way smoother. We're going to use the Lumetri color effect, and more specifically, the HSL secondary tab. Apply Lumetri to your clip, go to the HSL secondary, and now we're going to isolate the green color. Just use the eyedropper and select a good batch of that green screen, then expand the range if needed. Once you've got a good selection, we're going to reduce the contrast in the green, add a bit of blur, increase the saturation, decrease the tint, and increase the temperature. Why? Because a flat saturation saturated green is much easier to key than a noisy, contrastly, wrinkly screen. Green screen. This step basically preps the green screen and makes key lights job easier later on. Okay, wait, I need to show you something that will save you hours in After Effects. This plugin right here is the Storyblocks plugin and thank you Storyblocks so much for sponsoring. And also thank you for helping me make better videos because I use this thing all the time. With the plugin installed, I can just search for whatever I need. Animated titles, glitch overlays, transitions, even green screen VFX assets. Just drag them straight into the timeline. And it's not just for After Effects. They've got templates and assets for Premiere Pro, Apple Motion, and DaVinci Resolve 2. So yeah, if you bounce between softwares like I do, Storyblocks has your back. Now, people always ask, is it actually worth it? And yes, 100%. With their unlimited all-access plan, you get unlimited downloads for 4K stock footage, templates, music, sound effects, overlays, everything. One price, monthly or annual, no hidden cost. Plus, and this is a big one, everything is royalty-free. So you're covered from copyright strikes. What I really like is they're not just pumping out generic stock clips. Their restock collections are made by real artists and creators, capturing authentic stories, not that bland AI stuff. So if you care about telling more powerful human stories, why are you waiting? Get started to work faster, stay protected, and just be a better creator with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price. Head over to storyblocks.com slash After Effects Basics, or just click the link down below. Tip number three is all about denoising. If your footage has a lot of noise, it's gonna mess with your key. So let's fix that. After Effects has a native remove crane effect. It's a bit slow, but it does the job. Personally, I prefer using Topaz Video AI for this. It's a paid plugin, but if you're doing this often, it's worth it. Just run your clip through it before you even bring it into After Effects. And boom, your green screen will be smooth and now we're ready for actual keying. So tip four, let's start with the head layer. Add the key light effect and use the screen color picker to select the darkest green in your shot, usually the wrinkles or shadows. Set the view mode to intermediate result. This gives you a more accurate preview of the transparency without the spill suppression messing things up too early. Now, and this is the good part. Stack a second key light effect right below the first one. For the second one, pick a remaining green area and then go in and fine tune both effects. Adjust the clip white slider. Just push it a little to bring back details, especially hair strands. You can also adjust the other settings to make the key better. When I'm happy with the hair, I move on to the body and legs and repeat the process. The difference is it can be a bit harsher on those because the body doesn't need as much edge detail. Now for tip five, and this one's a bit of a sheet code, but it's so good. However, it only works if you already have your background set though. So make sure you've got that ready. We're gonna do a hair enhancement trick that adds this beautiful soft fringe around the subject and brings back even more hair detail. Here's how. Duplicate your original green screen clip again. Mask out the head area, just like before. Add key light to a basic key, doesn't have to be perfect. Then go to the screen math options and crank up the shrink and grow settings, like a lot, around 50 or 60. Now do the same thing for the soften property. What this does is it creates a blurred gray halo around your subject. Now take this blurry layer and place it between your keyed layers and your background. Then set the blending mode to hard light and boom, we still have an ugly halo. If this happens, just set your replace method to hard color and voila, suddenly the hair looks fuller, softer and blends in beautifully. If you're seeing some weird halos 
or color shifts, no stress. Just play around with the green selection of your key light and dial it until it looks good. You're basically painting in the hair. It's amazing. And now for the last tip, and this one really seals the deal, light wrapping. This is the magic that makes your subject actually look like it belongs in the scene. There's a free effect from Production Crate called Light Wrap. You can download it from their site, apply it to your key layer, and select your background layer as the source. Now it uses your background to softly wrap light around the edges of your subject. It's a subtle thing, but it makes a huge difference in realism. Just don't overdo it. Use it lightly. Wrap the light, not the entire subject. And that's it. Those are my go-to green screen hacks when the footage is looking rough. Let me know in the comments if this tutorial saved your shot. And if you want to learn the basics from green screen keying from scratch, definitely click the video right here on my left. Thank you so much for watching.